I'm Paul van der Heijning. I'm Professor and Chairman of the University Department of Otolaryngology and Head and Neck Surgery from the Antwerp University Hospital in Belgium. This presentation regards a test that we changed and adapted for older cochlear implant patients and in order to assess their cognitive function. This was done with my team and was recently published. The test we choose to assess cognitive functioning is the repeatable battery for the assessment of neuropsychological status. The test cost air bands. The test is widely used in medicine to compare evolution of cognitive functioning and this as well in people with normal, normal cognitive function as those with mild cognitive impairment even until dementia. So it covers a wide range of possibilities without that there are ceiling effects nor to the, to the high values as to these low values. If you look in literature, you will find maybe 300 publications using air bands to assess, for instance, cognitive functioning before and after cardiac surgery. Another advantage of air bands is that it can be done in clinical setting and that it takes about half an hour to give a good idea about the cognitive functioning of a certain person. This air bands has five domains. It assesses five domains. Immediate memory, visual, spatial and constructional capabilities, language, attention and delayed memory. It was introduced and developed by Christopher Randolph. And we did an adaptation for the air bands for hard of hearing people. Indeed, the original test of air bands is given to the patient within an oral way. So hearing problems might jeopardize a part of the outcome of these tests. And we call it the adapted test Airbans H. H from heart of hearing. And we use this test in our cochlear implant population as well, pre-cochlear implantation and the follow-up after six months, after one, one year and, and yearly on. What are the other particularities of this test, except for the fact that it is five domains yielding an analysis of the subdomains and giving a one overall measure? The main advantage is that there is an index score. What does that mean? The test compares with a normative database. So if someone is doing a cognitive test and an outcome, this outcome is compared with the normative database and you can assess whether this patient is performing equally well than an average population, poorer or better. You can compare it like an IQ test. If you have an IQ of 100, then it means that your IQ is average for your age group. When you get a score 100 with the air bands, that means that your cognitive function is similar than the average of the average population of your age category. If we look at someone of 50 years who is doing a, a test and doing a person of 80 years who is doing the test, then of course the performance on itself for the person of 80 years will be less than the one of 50 years on raw scores. But then it is compared to their average people, one, the 50 years to the category of 50 years, the one of 80 years to the category of 80 years. So if they both score average, then both persons from 80 and from 50 get a score 100. So it allows also to do studies across ages and to pool data between different eight ages. The tests have been proven to be sensitive to change and this is a 
real difference between two well-known tests of cognitive function. The first one is MOCA and the other one is the mini mental, the MSA test. The MSA test is a screening test for dementia. If you score under a certain amount, a certain number, then your cognitive function is in the area of dementia. With MOCA, when you score under a certain score, then you have a mild cognitive impairment, but both tests are not so sensitive in change and they have easily a ceiling effect. And so they do not allow subtle changes over time. And many other neuropsychological tests for cognitive function takes a large amount of time to test in detail, whereas this test can be done in a clinical setting. It means you can take this test in 30 minutes time. So we adapted this test for hearing impaired people by showing it also in a visual way. And just to give you an idea what this test means, I go over the different subdomains. The domain of immediate memory has two subtests. A list learning, it means 10 words are presented to the person and the person has to repeat them and this is done in three times and you score the amount of correct words repeat that are repeated. And then it's a story, a story of two sentences and the person has to repeat that story. And you score whether the person could repeat the essential elements of that story. This is the immediate memory. Now we go to the visual spatial and constructional capabilities and also here this test comprises two subtests. One is the light orientation and the test presents a number of double lines and you have to correlate it uh, with for instance, for instance 9 and 11 or 4 and 7 or 8 and you score the number of correct estimated pairs of lines. And then the figure copy, and the figure copy is quite complex, and they have to copy it exactly first by looking at the, the picture, at this figure, and then immediately without this picture that it is shown. And it is scored in a very precise way. And you see this is a quite complex figure and it is not so easy on the top of your head to copy it exactly without that you're looking at this picture. And you get one minute to look at it. And then we come to semantic fluency and picture naming. Semantic fluency is asked for instance during one minute give a number of fruits and vegetables and you score the amount of fruits and vegetables and the maximum score is 40. So you need to get a maximum score, you need to have 40 fruits and vegetables to name them within one minute. And then picture naming, there are a number of pictures but maybe not so uh, quite uh, common pictures and you have to name them. This is language performance. And then attention. Attention is first the digit span, and the digit span means I tell to you three, four, five, you have to repeat it, and then four figures and five figures and six, up to nine figures to repeat them. So only if you repeat nine figures consistently, then you get a maximum score. And then the coding, the coding is first a task where you see the figures in the codes, and then you have to decipher the code underneath and there's a long list and a full page of symbols to fill out in one minute and also this yields a particular score. And each time the scores, the raw scores, are compared with raw scores of your age category and ends up in an index score in this subdomain and this for your age. And then delayed memory, 
oh, do you still recall the list of 10 words that were said 50 minutes before, or 20 minutes before? Then there's a list given of names, and you have to recognize which one were in the initial list and which not. You have to tell again that story. And then, would you be able now already to draw again that figure? It's a figure recall, you, the complex figure I just been showing. This is the delayed memory. We adapted this test from its original presentation to a more visual presentation, but in the same time frame, in a normative category of patients. And these are patients that had normal hearing for the age. At the left side below, you see the average audio we have of people, for instance, in the age category of 50. And at the right side, you see the age category of 80, so it's normal hearing from them. And we analyzed this data, and you see that the median of our normative group of persons that got through that test had a median outcome of 100. So our distribution after changing the test was the same as the distribution of the original database of air bands. And so we concluded that we can use this air bands test adapted for people with hearing impairment to our patients with cochlear implantation and be able to use the original normative database. We come to a conclusion of Airbans H. Our adaptation of the Airbans H means that we have now a test for cognitive functioning for people with a hearing impairment. It may be patients with a profound hearing loss or patients with cochlear implantation. The test is available in many languages and it is available through the hearing group. It is with the hearing group that this assessment and this adaptation was performed. The test takes only 30 minutes to be performed, so it is applicable in clinical routine. And very important, the test is sensitive to change and can be applied in people with normal cognitive functioning up to people with mild cognitive impairment up to dementia. So there is no ceiling effect in this test. It will help us in doing many studies on cognitive functioning in severely hearing impaired persons.